Let us go. Let us go. Monitoring right now. Okay. So, I believe we're live on YouTube. Using a new, uh, a new app this time. And we're going to see if anybody shows up. Because I'm talking about talking about recorders today and the reason I wanted to do this is because um, hang on turn up some volume here and turn down this preamp because we don't want anything to clip <laughs> all right so I'm talking about audio recorders today and audio recorders are one of my love languages as many of you already know but I just got a new one. Okay, raise your hand if you are here and you have an audio recorder. And then tell me which one you have. I'm going to start by talking about the one that I currently have. It's a Zoom H6. Now, if you're new to the video world, the Zoom H6 is going to be probably pretty advanced. I mean, it's in the category of prosumer. So it's not going to be like... Um, sorry, just getting distracted by looking at my str stream. <laughs> It's working. Actually, I do want to turn up the volume just a little bit here. Turn up a preamp. So it's not in the category of like crazy professional. And it's also not a uh, just a consumer enthusiast recorder. It's somewhere perfectly in the middle. And I just love this thing because of its quiet preamps. It has had, for the most part, the quietest preamps I've ever used on a recorder of this size. I mean, I've I worked with Tascam recorders way back in the day before I was in the film world as well as the old Roland recorders I don't know if anybody's ever used Roland um, and then of course the zoom handy recorders the H4n the H1 all those kinds of things and the H1 obviously didn't have XLRs but this one uh, four XLR inputs six if you have the uh, external capsule that gives you two more and they have very quiet preamps so if you need phantom power and you got a mic that's pretty quiet, low self noise. This is such a good recorder. And I've used this for, for four straight years. I bought this in 2014 and it has been blessing me for those, those, all those years. Now, the downside to the H6, if you're doing a big, a big time production, there is only four inputs, technically six. But again, those two top capsules, if you have that other um, adapter, don't give phantom power. So those are only good for capturing passive uh, sources or line level sources. But there's no backup recording on the phantom power um, inputs, and that was all. That was that was a big problem for me. So <laughs> that's one thing. The other thing about it is uh, there just isn't a lot of inputs if you've got a lot of sources. So I, it was time for me to upgrade. Now, if you're just joining, we're talking about audio recorders, and I want you to interact. I want you to tell me which audio recorder you use if you're here and you're part of the Audio Gospel fam, because we love audio recorders around here. But I went ahead and bought a new one, and I'm just going to show it to you because there's no drum rolls to be had and nothing special. But I decided finally to get the F8. That's the sound of the crowd. Okay. All the pomp and circumstance aside, I've had this for about a week now, and I've used it on two different shoots very sheepishly because the only other time I used it was when I did a review on it last August. When I did that review, it was because I was reviewing, or sorry, it was because I was renting this from lensrentals.com. I did not own it then, and I own it now. So why am I excited about this? Well, first of all, <clears throat> the form factor fits in a pouch now rather than either in your hand or on a camera. This one is hard to do boom hopping with, with because you can't see this menu when you're working with it. The Zoom H F8, I can't even talk today. The Zoom F8 has its screen right here on the top. So when it's sitting in your pouch, which hang on, check out this pouch. This is the audio pouch that you can buy with it. It all costs lots of money because everything good costs lots of money. But. If you want to do traditional boom hopping, that's what you need. And so when it's sitting in that pouch, you can see exactly what's going on. All eight channels and your left, right stereo sub mix are all shown right here on this screen. So we're going to go ahead and power it on and just look through it. 
very briefly, if you watch that video that I did, which was the F8 um, review, I got uh, I didn't get in depth. I just kind of did some overview stuff about it, but I only had it for two days. So it wasn't like I had enough time to really extensively get to know the device the way I've gotten to know the H6. Here's the deal with the H6. I could operate that while I'm sleeping. And many nights I do. I wake up and I sleepwalk and I come down here and, and I operate the H6 and it just records sounds when I'm sleeping. That's not true, but that'd be cool if it was or a little terrifying. So right here you see that you've got this, this way to monitor all your channels, which is huge. You can turn on different channels, turn them off. You can monitor individual channels while record, recording multiple, which was really uh, difficult with the H6. Say I'm out recording commercial stuff and uh, I'm out recording commercial stuff and I'm doing a couple different sources. Well, I'm, I'm hearing the stereo submix, a left, right of all sources when you're monitoring with the H6. That becomes a problem because there are phase issues between a lav mic that's mounted and a boom mic overhead. So to be able to isolate what you're actually, um, not only the submix, but isolate the channels is really, really important with the F8. So that's huge. The other thing that just is amazing is it actually allows backup recording. So if I want to record on channel one with my Rode NTG3, I can send the backup to channel five and I can set the gain of channel five as low as I want it. So that's huge. That is a game changer. Because I can do four channels at once and do four backups at the same time. This is like totally blowing my mind. So love that. Also the very quiet preamps. They're much even quieter than the H6. I did that uh, test in my first video on this back in August. A couple other things. It's powered by eight AA batteries that don't last that long. It also has a Hiroshi input that you can get an adapter for NP style batteries or any other types of batteries. So let's see what's going on. I'm out of breath because I've been running around. Kevin Clements, what's up, dude? Good to see you. I'm glad that you're here. I like watching your videos. You motivate me to get out there and get fit. <coughs> Learn, film, repeat. H4N has been your go-to since the beginning. The F8 is on my to-get list. Super jealous right now. Yeah, man. I yeah. It's I, I've been looking at it really since I got into this um, when it was released. I think it was like late 2015, but. To get to rent it in August was awesome. And it's a little overwhelming at first, honestly, with all the different buttons. And there's so many different options on each channel, which is great. Um, but, yeah, it's just it's just buttery wonderful. I wish there was a way to, like, I guess I could, like, stream with this and l let you listen to the preamps. But right now, over the Internet, you're hearing my cloud lifter, obviously the SM7B, into the Apollo Twin, which has pretty quiet preamps, let's be honest. So thank you, brother. Just passed 19 pounds, lost in 12 weeks. Good job, Kevin. Way to go, man. KC. KC, the initials of Kansas City and also Kevin Clements. Um, yeah. Justin, what's up? Yo, yo, live stream audio question. Anyone else only getting sound to left channel? Something you can tweak, Oliver? Hey, that's a great call. If anybody's in headphones, we only go into the left channel. I'm sitting here over in OBS and I can probably tweak this. This is my first time to use this. You know, we could do a couple things. We could do stereo audio. <clears throat> Just plug in another one. <laughs> That's stupid. I don't know how to use this thing. Give me one sec. While I'm while I'm while I'm making this switch, um, tell me where you guys are at and what what kind of audio adventures or video adventures you've been on. Are you a professional filmmaker? Are you an enthusiast? Tell me a little bit about what you do. And let me see if I can add this to the program. Testing. Testing. Let me know if it changes, by the way, to a properties, universal audio. Advanced audio properties. Monitor off. Don't mono it. Down mix to mono. Down mix to mono. Are we good? Are we there? All right. Looks like, sounds like we're double mixed here. Okay. How does that sound? Anybody? Doubled up on the left channel? Haha. <laughs> sounds funky. <laughs> okay. Thanks for your patience. 
This may not be one that's fun to go back to, but I am learning in real time, and we're going to start doing this more. Sounds right now. Great. Great. Closer. Closer. <laughs> Close is good. Close is good. Mike Ox going to pan it. What's going on here? Boom. Testing. Let's see if I can turn that off. Now we're back to sound. Sounds good now. Cool. Okay, so who else we got here? Daniel Murphy, Wichita. Respect, man. My wife's from Wichita. My grandmother lived in Wichita. My dad was born in Wichita, so I like Wichita. That's cool. Learning audio here, man. You and me both learning as we go. We love it. Um, thanks, Justin K. Appreciate you. You're up in Omaha, I think. Uh, or somewhere in Nebraska. That's where the Kansas Jayhawks, you'll see this flag, just beat the Duke Blue Devils and advanced to the Final Four, something I was quite passionate about and excited to see. So that was a big deal in basketball news. So what I'm going to do, transitioning back to the F8 here before we, we call this, um, right now, like I said, it is powered with double A's, which is a mess. Battery burning is such a problem in the filmmaking world. I have a massive stack of batteries over there that are semi-used, half-used, partially used, and that is frustrating because it's like you can't go into a shoot with fresh batteries, and uh, you also can't <clears throat> take those batteries and, yeah, it's just stupid. So uh, that's why I'm going to get this NPF adapter, which will be super cool because I'm using NPF batteries on both these lights. i got an Aperture Amaran over there and an Aperture Amaran over here, and we're sending some light my way, daylight colored here with the GH4 recording it all and so using NP batteries you can actually plug them into the back with a Hirose actually right here on the side with a Hirose connector which is a little four prong connector deal oh another cool thing about this that I love um, Omaha represent for March Madness NC attorney with a dud for me your cane sorry Kevin man I, I, I wish I could be I wish I could be sad for you but I'm too pumped about my Jayhawks so so Okay, so there are two SD slots in this, and I did talk about this in my video of it, but this is really huge because you can do dual recording where from a file standpoint, not an audio signal standpoint, you're doing a backup recording. So if something were to happen to an SD card, you would have it on the other channel. I love this because that's critical to me. Media storage, I'm very insecure about always. And when I'm out shooting with the C100, which is what I have right here, which is what I shoot most of my YouTube content with, unless I'm on the roof, and then I'm using this guy, which is the GH4. The double recording in this is huge from a video standpoint. If you've ever used a C100, you know that there are two cards. And you can do relay recording if you have a really heavy day. I hardly ever do that. I would rather have two uh, cards recording the exact same thing in case one goes down. I've had one go down on me before. It was not a fun day. I've also had a four terabyte hard drive go down on me was not a fun month, maybe a year. So <clears throat> the dual recording on the F8 is great because I've always recorded on the H6 just on one memory card, and it's like, what if something happens to the memory card, especially if it's an all-day thing? So having two is invaluable. Um, do you all have any recorder questions? I'm obviously over here in Zoom land. I'm not anti Tascam. I just happen to start buying Zoom products before I bought Tascam products. I've used the Tascam DR100 Mark III, I think, and the DR, the big chunky one. I forget what DR that one is. Um, I've heard H4N from one of you. What else do you guys use that are gals if you're out there and watching? Um, what are some of your recorders, and do you have questions about it? Do you have questions for me in general? Do you have questions about audio, life? Um, uh, wireless transmitters like the Rode Wireless Filmmakers Kit that I finally just bought. I've been renting this thing for two years and I'm excited to just purchase it. It was on Sweetwater and if any of you have been to Sweetwater.com, you know they have a zero interest credit card. <laughs> so I got a little got a little wild. Hi Larry, welcome. Welcome to the program as they say. So anyway, um, any questions? I'd love to chit chat, talk about that. Probably got like five minutes or so here before I got to take off. KC, you got to run. You take care and go Jayhawks. Keep being awesome. You do the same, man. 
keep motivating everybody. You've got a great little community over on your channel. I always love going over there and watching your videos. And right, go Jayhawks. It's going to be a uh, very, very challenging game against Villanova on Saturday evening, late night game. But uh, I'm excited about it. Okay, so I think that will probably do it for this live stream. Now that I've actually, you, now that I'm actually using software, I've got some high quality stuff. It's taken me a while to get up and running. This is something I'd like to do more of. I do really enjoy this medium, um, and this saves me from having to get on the roof. Which, by the way, we're getting a new roof. I work at home. I make this stuff at home. I'm in my house, in the basement-ish situation. That's the door to the outside. I could do a studio tour sometime, maybe. It's really actually tiny. If you think it's big, because like the videos make it look like it's big, it's not. It's tiny and dirty. Um, it's all a lie. But uh, we're getting a new roof, so Rooftop Tuesday is going to be tricky. Right now there's a bunch of new shingles up there, um, and it's wet. And so I was like, again, I don't feel like risking death over that, but I do love that tradition, and I'm happy that it's happening over on, on my channel, here on my channel. So with nothing else... I think I will see you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in. Great for the, having, grateful to have a little conversation with each and every one of you. Be blessed. Stay well. And I will see you next time.